I have something to say. Cena kicks off the night with more cheers than jeers. Me thinks editing was at play. Vinny, you've got some explaining to do. He tells his critics to stop it with the doubt, and he's not done. Cena is here because he wants to be here, and he wants to be champion. The day he no longer wants to be champion is the day he shall leave. Oh, please, John. Don't tease me. Buzzkill McGill's emerging Seth Rollins and Kane and accuse Cena of a mid-career crisis. Really? Cena retorts to Mr. Plan B that Mr. Plan A is here and the adults are talking. Uh, I got nothing. Kane says, watch your mouth or I will put you in a match. Ooh, so scared. Roman Reigns comes in and although he will finish his business with Randy Orton this coming Monday on Raw, for the time being he'll settle with Seth Rollins and Kane. More trash talking comes from the Diet Corporation with the Discount Monsters showing up and then Y2J, Chris Jericho along with Big Show and Mark Henry. More buzz killing happens in Triple Mucknose H comes out and says, Let me tell you something, player. Pardon me? A tag team match and you just did the worst impression of Teddy Long. I wonder what Teddy Long thinks about this. Triple H says, Everyone knows how it works. It's a ten man tag match with everyone in the ring. Now how about that, player? Holla! And he even played out to Teddy Long's music as we get a 10-man tag for the main event. Ugh. Please tell me there's a match. An awesome opening card with two great superstars putting on an amazing display that sold the Intercontinental Champion comeback twice against the former US Champion, but won via Kelly Kelly roll-up. The way to victory was cheap, but a good opener nonetheless. Sheamus and Cesaro exchanging some trash talk, which ends with a bro kick to Cesaro. I have something to say. It's clear that Cody has learnt well from his elder brother, as he seems to be having some of a split personality crisis. Goldust says they will have tag team gold come Night of Champions. You know you're doing a promo well when you're creeping people out and seemingly enjoying it. Cody, cut the dose. It's a squash. Despite having very good momentum, Heath Slater lost in 2 minutes and 59 seconds. Oh, Slater, you never change. And somewhere, L-Man is raging. Hi, by the way. I have something to say. Rule cap of the wannabe Kirsten Dunces showcasing their acting and bickering over who was the number one contender and Nikki playing victim card 721. Cut to pre-tape footage from earlier in the day of Stephanie announcing that at Night of Champions it will be Paige versus AJ Lee versus Nikki Bella for the WWE Divas Championship. And it will be a triple threat match. Well, la -dee da Steph. Thank you for pointing out what was more obvious than Randy Orton being bland. Randy Blandy. I'm gonna make that a thing. I have something to say. I swear this is becoming an avenue just to stroke egos. No, Triple H, this is not your time. Byron interviews Nikki Bella. Oh boy, this is gonna be painful. She thanks Steph for her title shot. Ugh. I have something to say. Hello? I came here to see wrestling. Where is wrestling? Lana accuses America of being an oxymoron when they're supposed to be in the heartland of America when it has no heart. And if it has one, it's made in China. Lana, you're on your own. Not touching that. She goes on to call Mark Henry irrelevant. Lana, keep your words soft. 
because you may have to chew them. Henry comes out and asks Rusev if he will accept his challenge or hide behind the loudmouth that looks like an escort. They accept. Henry says at Night of Champions he will give them a good old red, white and blue ass whooping. You know, I'm not the biggest Mark Henry fan, but that's a match I wouldn't mind seeing. Henry versus Rusev. Could be cool. And no doubt Weevil's gonna see that bit and say, I disagree, dude. Hi, Weevil. Bring out the Divas! Brie Bella gets new music, and I like it. It's very upbeat. No surprise that Paige carried Brie through this match, despite Mrs. Danielson being an improved competitor. And there were yes chants. We miss you, Daniel. Get well soon. AJ talks trash with the discount Kelly Kelly, and Nikki goes as far to say, Go away, you're not in my league. What is this league that you're in, Nikki? The Lackluster League? Don't deny it, you're all thinking it. Naturally, the saving grace of the Divas division pummels Nikki Bella to the ground. Paige scores a win via Rampage. An okay match at best, but could have done without the drama at ringside. It's too much drama. Although, AJ's commentating did help to make it entertaining, but then again, it's AJ Lee. She's always entertaining. I have something to say. Discount Adam's family say Jericho has sins to pay for this coming Monday. Uh-huh. Jobbing time. It's a squash. Well, hello there, Mr. Glutton for Punishment. Long time no see. And you got the jobber entrance? Some things never change. Bo gains a win via Bodog in 45 seconds. Bo patronizes the audience and says that they can all turn it around like swagger if they just believe. Mind you, that's what he would have liked to have said, but he gets interrupted by the former World Heavyweight Champion in Jack Swagger and angrily guns for Bo. But given the torment he's put up with him in recent weeks, can you blame the guy? Zeb gets in on the mic and demonstrates to Bo how it's properly done. We the people. This was a roller coaster ride of a main event with everyone getting a turn. Strong chance through the match for Cena, Roman Reigns, and Chris Jericho. The type of match that never left a breath for the fans, and these are the type of main events that the WWE should be doing on a weekly basis. If this is a sign of how the booking is to be done, then I like where this is going. The match ended up in a no contest with the Wyatt all ganging up on Cena. I'm sure Oni will like that. Big Show and company all had turns in taking their opponents out as SmackDown goes off the air. If you took out all the talking segments from this week's episode, it would have been a B rating. Easily. But because of the unnecessary Teddy Long imitation and talking segments, it once again gets a modest C rating. Until next week.